So thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm Andrea Rosa from the University of Lugano, also known as Università della Svizzera Italiana. Um, the work I'm presenting today is a joint work done with Eduardo Rosales and Walter Binder, also from the University of Lugano. So our work uh, deals with reflective information in the Java virtual machine. We consider reflective information as any information on a Java class or method that is available at runtime. This information is provided by the Java Reflection API. For example, um, uh, reflective information on a Java class are embedded in the corresponding uh, instance of a Java LAN class that is offered by the Java Reflection API. Um, in our work, among the several kinds of reflective information, we care in particular about reflective super tight information which is a term that we use to refer to information on any direct and indirect supertypes of a given class. For example, uh, given an instance of a Java LAN class, one can access the direct supertypes of the class by calling methods getSuperClass and getInterfaces, and by calling recursively the same methods on uh, direct supertypes, one can also know the uh, undirect supertypes of that class. Um, we are particularly concerned about the availability of reflective supertype information during instrumentation. And the reason is that if such information is available, then the resulting dynamic analysis may be more efficient. For example, consider an analysis that targets all the threads that are spawned by an application. The instrumentation framework needs to recognize which among the several classes that are loaded by the JVM is a thread or a subtype of threads. So in particular, it must be able to um, recognize the four classes that you see here in the slide with a, a red dot. So if reflective supertype information is not available, the framework may not know which are the supertypes of any given class. So if the framework still wants to implement an accurate analysis, it might end up with instrumenting many more classes than those that are actually needed and in order to double check that an object is really a thread, it must insert some runtime check, uh, like this one here in the slide, to guard against execution of analysis code only if the object is really a thread. And unfortunately, those uh, runtime check, if they are executed continuously, and if there are many of them, may lead to an increased overhead of the analysis. On the other hand, if reflective supertype information is available, then the framework may immediately recognize which classes are subtypes of threads or are threads. In this case, apart from instrumenting many, uh, less classes than before, um, the inserted code may also avoid this expensive runtime check. So in the long run, this solution may uh, lead to a less overhead than the previous solution. So in general, uh, having reflective supertype information during instrumentation is desirable. Unfortunately, the availability of reflective supertype information is usually in contrast with the ability of the framework to instrument all the classes that are loaded by the JVM, which is a feature that uh, here we call full code coverage. For example, um, frameworks that rely on compile time instrumentation in general has no access to uh, complete reflective supertype information and usually they also cannot uh, instrument all the classes that can be loaded by the JVM. This is, for example, the approach used by the uh, compile time weaver of AspectJ. Some other frameworks may choose to um, perform the instrumentation as soon as a class is loaded, and to perform the instrumentation in the same process that will run also application code. This is, for example, the approach used by the load time weaver of AspectJ. In this case, uh, complete reflective supertight information is in general available. However, the framework uh, is not able to um, instrument all the classes that are loaded by the JVM. And the reason is that usually instrumenting the classes inside the Java class library is problematic. So many frameworks like, for example, AspJ, prevents the instrumentation of all the classes inside the Java class library. Um, other frameworks like, for example, Diesel, may still perform the instrumentation at load time, but this time uh, using a separate process to carry on the instrumentation. In this case, full code coverage is usually guaranteed, but on the other hand, complete reflective supertype information is uh, unfortunately not available. Um, apart from such two features, the instrumentation framework may need to access class loader namespaces. 
this is particularly important for uh, uniquely identify a given class loaded at runtime. And I will provide more information on this point later. Unfortunately, um, all the uh, instrumentation techniques based on compile time instrumentation cannot access class loader in spaces because they are not known at compile time. And on the other hand, we are not aware of any framework resulting on load time instrumentation that offers uh, the inspection of class loader in spaces. So um, our goal is to provide an approach that can make all these free features available in load time out of process instrumentation. Um, in detail, in this paper, we present a new technique to accurately reify complete reflective supertype information in a separate instrumentation process. In particular, uh, we ensure that class loader namespaces are available in the instrumentation process. We also guarantee that complete uh, reflective supertype information is available uh, when a class is going to be instrumented. And our approach works with full code coverage. Um, we implemented our approach in the diesel Java bytecode instrumentation framework that I'm going to discuss next. So before providing more details on our extended diesel framework, I would like to spend some works on how normally an instrumentation in diesel works. So as I said, diesel relies on a separate process for conducting the instrumentation. This process in diesel is called diesel server. Um, a native agent implemented using a JVMTI is attached to the target JVM, and the agent is able to intercept each class that is loaded by the JVM before the class is linked. The agent will send each class to the diesel server. The diesel, the diesel server, in turn, will determine whether the class should be instrumented and also how, and will send the modified and the instrumented class back to the JVM. So our extension makes possible for the diesel server to access reflective supertype information. This is, for example, um, useful when the instrumentation shall occur based on which are the supertypes of the class that the server receives. So like in, uh, in the JVM, one would access the Java Reflection API to get information about the supertypes. That is, in the diesel server, the instrumentation logic can access a new API that we have to define which we call diesel reflection API. Um, in particular, for each class that is uh, loaded by the target JVM, we, um, we create a new instance of a diesel class here, and the goal of a diesel class will be to um, provide access to the reflective uh, supertype information, the same one that could be accessible by querying a JavaLang class in the Java reflection API. And similarly, the purpose of diesel class loader is to replicate class loader namespaces that would be available um, in, inside each instance of a Java LAN class loader in the Java Reflection API. Um, you can see here some of the methods of the diesel reflection API. Um, we will use this method uh, for getting a unique ID, for example, that can uh, identify each class loader here as well as in the diesel server. And we use uh, the diesel class typically to um, retrieve reflective supertype information, either, uh, in particular, it can be used either to retrieve the uh, direct supertypes or the indirect ones of a given class. So again, all this, uh, this uh, diesel class loader and diesel class can be assessed by the instrumentation process, something that normally would not be possible um, in a separate instrumentation process. So in order to support um, the diesel reflection API, um, we made a number of modifications to the diesel framework. The first one is related to the class loading inside this, the JVM. So the JVM specification um, specified that a subtype can be loaded in the JVM before supertypes. Um, this, um, uh, on the one hand, ensures that um, the JVM can uh, load classes as needed. On the other hand, it may create some problem in the diesel server when, re when retrieving the supertypes of a given class. For example, suppose that um, the diesel server is in the process of instrumenting C. So um, the diesel server may call some methods of the diesel class API in order to retrieve the supertypes of C. Unfortunately, the server knows about the existence of a supertype only 
if such a supertype has been loaded already by the JVM. For example, it may happen that B is not loaded by the JVM when C is about to be instrumented, and this will cause some exception here when attempting to retrieve all the supertypes of C. So in order to um, solve this problem, we have modified the order in which classes are loaded in the JVM. In particular, we make sure that all the supertypes are always loaded before a subtype is instrumented in the server. So here I, I would like to show the algorithm at a high level. Um, I don't want to enter into the details of the algorithm that you can anyways find in the paper. I just want to give a high level description. So the algorithm for first loading the supertypes executes in a callback, which is called each time a new class is loaded by the target JVM. And in turn, this callback is embedded into the JVMTI agent, which is attached to the JVM. Um, this, uh, the callback has access to the original byte array of the loaded class, which is the same one that you can read from the class file of the class. And it has also access to the class loader used to define the loaded class. Since the last uh, operation that will be executed by the algorithm is to send the class to the server for instrumentation, the output of the algorithm will be the instrumented byte array of the loaded class. So essentially, the algorithm scans the, um, the byte array of the class that has been loaded. It looks for the name of the super class of the class, and it looks also of the names of the interfaces that are implemented directly. And for each of them, we'll trigger their loading through uh, some JNI code using the same class loader that was used to define um, the subtype. Let me give you an example. So suppose that um, the class that has been just loaded is C. At some point, the algorithm will find out that the direct supertype of C is B. So the algorithm will trigger the loading of B using the same class loader that was used for defining C. If B has not been loaded yet, it will be loaded. And since B has been loaded, the same callback will execute, this time in the context of B. So using the same process, the algorithm will recognize that A is a direct supertype of B, so it will trigger the loading of A, and so on. So when a, this algorithm, when um, apart from loading the class, when a class is loaded, and since the algorithm, since the callback is executed, uh, uh, resumes in the context of the supertype, this method actually triggers the instrumentation of all the supertypes of a given class, such that when the callback finally resumes in the context of C. All the supertypes, including the uh, undirect one of C, have been already loaded, sent to the diesel server, and instrumented. So in this way, when C will be instrumented uh, in the server, actually all the reflective supertype information about C will be available in the server. Um, another modification that we made to diesel is necessary to support reification of class load interfaces in the diesel server. Um, in Java, multiple classes with the same fully qualified name can be loaded at the same time, provided that they are defined by different class loaders. So the type hierarchy that you see here in the upper part of the figure is actually legal, occur at runtime in a JVM. Um, the problem of uh, this uh, specification is that if the diesel server is about to instrument a class that it knows to be called C, and if more classes called C are, are loaded in the JVM, the server doesn't know which of the two C classes is instrumenting. So for this reason, um, the agent must send, uh, apart from the byte array of the class to be instrumented, it must send also more information about which class loader um, is defining the same class. And a similar problem may occur when determining which is the super type of C. The diesel server at some point will need to, uh, will, uh, may know that C has one super type, which is called B, but again, it doesn't know which is the defining class loader of B. So in summary, the, uh, we modified the, uh, the diesel um, communication protocol such that um, the agent sends not only the byte array of the class to be instrumented, but also 
information about the defining class loader of the class under instrumentation and also the defining class loader of all the direct supertypes of such class. Um, the information needed for uh, supporting this protocol can be retrieved during the forced loading of supertypes. In particular, as soon as a um, supertype has been loaded, we retrieve uh, the object corresponding to the class loader that was used for loading the supertype. In general, this object can be different from the defining class loader of the subtype because the JVM can delegate um, class loading to another class loader. Once this object is available, um, we, and actually we can retrieve this object by a series of JNI calls. When this object is available, we map each class loader to a given ID. And we do that by resorting to the if tagging feature that is made available by JVMTI. Essentially, we assign a unique ID to each new instance of, class, of a class loader, and then we will send this ID to the diesel server, such that we can have a unique reference for each class loader that can be maintained um, both in the JVM and also in the server. Um, this information is retrieved for each supertype loaded. It is then bundled into pairs, and at the end, it will be sent along with the class to be instrumented to a diesel server. So we have evaluated our approach um, with an analysis that profiles all the tasks spawned by a Java application. In particular, the target analysis defines a task to be a subtype of a runnable or a callable. So we have, um, in order to run the evaluation, we have applied a task profiler, which goal is to detect and profile some information about each instance of a callable or a runnable um, spawned by a Java application. We have run uh, the task profiler on all the benchmarks from the Dacapo suite, and we have compared three different benchmarks. We have compared ASPJ uh, in the setting using load time in process instrumentation, we have compared the original diesel, which doesn't use the new diesel reflection API. And finally, uh, we compare also the performance of our new framework, which makes use of the diesel reflection API. And in this evaluation, we are interested in the overhead of the dynamic analysis and also of the code coverage. Regarding the overhead, you can see in the figure uh, the difference, uh, actually the overhead, of using the latest diesel release, which doesn't use the diesel reflection API, compared to the overhead of using the reflection API. So you can see that in all the benchmarks, um, not using the reflection API actually caused a high overhead. The overhead is, if you take the average, is on average 19% um, on all the benchmarks from the Dacapo suite. And the reason of this added overhead is that if the framework has no tasks to reflective supertype information, it is not able to recognize the subtypes, the supertypes of a given class. And it has to instrument many more classes than those that are actually needed. And it will insert the runtime check that uh, I've shown in one of the first slides. And continuously executing those runtime check will result in a significant uh, average overhead. This overhead is actually reduced when using the diesel reflection API. Here, the uh, code inserted is more efficient, and the average overhead is only around um, 3%. So on average, using the diesel reflection API um, enables to save 16% um, of the overhead on the whole benchmark, on all the benchmarks of the Dacapo, with a difference that can be up to 45% in full. Um, I will quickly go uh, through the evaluation of the code coverage. Here I show the difference between um, the tasks that are detected by ASPECT-J and those that are detected by Diesel. As you can see, apart from um, three benchmarks, um, there are several tasks that are undetected in ASPECT-J and are instead detected in Diesel. And this is because those tasks are contained in the Java class library. ASPECT-J cannot um, instrument the Java class library, and this results in some undetected tasks. And at the end, the resulting analysis, if implemented with ASPJ, may suffer from um, poor accuracy. So on average, only the 71% of the tasks needs to be profiled by, uh, can be profiled by ASPJ. There is actually not an issue with, uh, with Diesel, 
which can um, always profile all the tasks that are spawned by a given application. So before concluding, I would like to mention some of the uh, current limitations of our approach. Um, first, our approach is uh, unfortunately incompatible with other analysis making use of the IP tagging feature offered by JVNTI. And the reason is that other analysis may use the same uh, feature for other purposes. As a possible solution, we, we are planning to um, modify the IP tagging feature and substituting it with a wiki identity-based hash tables to map class loaders to ID. This will avoid disrupting existing analysis that use uh, the JVNTI IP tagging. And another limitation is that um, reflective supertype information are currently not available for fields, method receivers, and arguments. So it means that um, we can guarantee that upon instrumenting a class, um, reflective supertype information related to all the supertypes of that class are available. But this is not guaranteed to be available for any field, method receiver, or argument. And the reason is that by allowing so, um, this is actually, this would, this would probably lead to a huge memory footprint and may slow down significantly the, the JVM startup. So, to conclude my talk, um, in the paper, we have presented a new technique to reify reflective supertype information in a separate instrumentation process. We make um, class load learning spaces available to a separate instrumentation process. We guarantee that accurate and complete reflective supertype information is available for each loaded class. And finally, our approach reconcile complete reflective supertype information with um, full code coverage. This approach has been integrated to diesel, and our evaluation uh, shows that one can obtain significant overhead reductions in type specific uh, instrumentation. That's all for my talk. Thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to take any questions.